In this video we will look at deep inelastic scattering. When starting any video like this it is convenient to ask the question what actually is the thing we are going to be talking about. The concept of elastic scattering is that we start with a proton and an electron and end with a proton and electron. In deep inelastic scattering something else occurs, the electrons interact with something inside the proton called a pattern causing the proton to fragment into different hadrons, labeled here by X images are equal to 1000 words, especially when those whose words are spoken by a crude robotic voice. So here is a public domain picture from the interweb of deep inelastic scattering. Don't be fooled by the presence of only three lines leaving the proton, these are patterns we are talking about not quarks, there could be more. An important parameter in any scattering experiment is the differential cross-section. For the case of elastic scattering we can get this by timing the Mott differential cross-section by the square of something called the form factor. The Mott differential cross-section is that due to a point-like particle, whilst the form factor takes care of the non-point-like shape of the thing we are scattering from. In deep inelastic scattering the form factor is replaced by these things called structure factors, which are the analogous to the form factors. Okay so here is a graph of the form factor for a point charge in green and a proton in purple. The y-axis represents the form factor and the x-axis is the square of the momentum transfer. If quarks are point-like we would expect the structure factors to be like the green line i.e. point-like. So let us discuss these in more detail. We will focus here on the structure factor of F2. This depends on something called the Bjorken parameter, which is the fraction of the proton for momentum carried by the pattern under consideration. It also a priori depends on the value of the momentum transfer, as in the case of a proton. Now if the patterns are point-like then we would expect F2 to be independent of X, something known as Bjorken scaling. This works for the most part, but is violated at low and high values of X. Before we go on to looking at this violation in more detail, here is a picture of James Bjorken, who featured prominently in that last slide. The violation of at low and high X can be described in terms of these things called pattern distribution functions. These can be described as the mean number of the ITH type of patron with longitudinal momentum fraction from X to X plus DX appropriate to a scattering experiment with momentum transfer Q. By appropriate to a scattering experiment with momentum transfer Q we mean when using a probe beam with this momentum transfer. For low Q our resolution is small, and what we interpret as quarks are actually made up of lots of quarks, gluons and antiquarks, which thus combined have a high Bjorken parameter X. As Q increases we interpret these as different entities, and hence the Bjorken parameter X is taken as that of each individual one, which is smaller. This leads to the Bjorken scaling violation discussed above. Okay so I know I didn't explain that last bit very well, or in fact any of it, but if you want a nice clear explanation of Bjorken scaling violation I recommend the new physics by Paul Davies, which has a really nice description. Thanks for watching.